Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Chan. I'm Ernst Young Greater China Media Entertainment Industry Leader. I would like to first give thank you to Mitch Muhausen, Managing Director of Cinema Coin, and Minut Ops, President, Warner Brothers International Cinema, for giving me this opportunity to speak to you about something exciting happening in China media entertainment or ME sectors. When people think of China, a lot of times they think of low-cost manufacturing of industrial and consumer goods. For numerous reasons, China's ME sector does not get the same level of attention. So today, I would like to turn the spotlight on China media entertainment sectors. Judged by numerous metrics, China has one of the largest and fastest growing ME industry in the world. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the opportunities of the China ME sectors, the market challenges, and the strategy for success. No discussion of China media entertainment sector will be complete without an understanding of the economic factors that underlie the growth of all sectors in China. China definitely is already an enormous economic power. It's already the world's second largest economy. In year 2000, China's shares of global GDP was only 7.1%. But by 2020, it is an estimated 19.7%. The Chinese economy has also undergone significant structural changes. And the Chinese government are working very hard to change its economy to encourage significant domestic consumption. As you can see from this table, China already ranks number one or number two in terms of the consumption of these categories of goods and services. And in fact, a growing percentage of this consumption is being spent on M&D products and services. China is already the world's second largest film market. And China box office revenue is expected to surpass that of the US by 2020. And this is the reason why a lot of Global ME companies like yourself are paying more and more attention to the China market. As we have seen, the China economic growth has been quite amazing. However, sustaining this momentum would require a concerted effort and careful planning, led by President Xi Jinping. Shortly after his promotion of Came, came to the office in November 2012, President Xi laid out his vision for China, spelled in a speech called the China Dream. It seeks to create a comprehensive and moderately prosperous society by year 2020. But what does that really mean? This could mean China becoming the world's largest economy. To achieve this, a key element is to move China from an export and investment driven economy to one that is powered by domestic consumption. And then the Chinese government is also trying to increase the regional development. And then another key driver is to increase the so called China soft power, which means China cultural influence around the world. And this would require the significant growth of China cultural industry, which includes the m and &E industry. All of these core elements to achieve the China dream, and which also underlies the China latest five-year plan, will, give, will offer tremendous opportunities for the m and &E companies for the development in China, as I will explain later. As we have just discussed how the Chinese government tried to keep this economy ongoing, much of this growth in the future will be coming outside of China Tier 1 city. Currently, the consumption, of course, is still predominantly contributed by the Tier 1 city. But Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities 
the growth, the growth, the pace of growth will be much faster. And it will be the future growth engine in China. And by year 2025, China will have over 220 cities with a population in excess of 1 million. And over 23 cities with a population of over 5 million. And this is in comparison with only 23 cities now in Europe with that size. These regional market opportunities are increasingly being supported by the regulatory development. As I mentioned earlier, to achieve, to achieve the China dream and the China latest five-year plan, the China wants the cultural industry to be a greater growth driver for its economy. And of course, China is still very protective of its m and &E industry. But nevertheless, it is now steadily liberalizing the sectors. This change in this philosophy is beginning to have more practical effects across various sectors of M&E and present the growing opportunities for M&E companies, both domestic, for domestic companies as well as for foreign companies. One notable example, I think especially relevant for a lot of you, is in relation to the film entertainment industry. The Chinese government recently raised the quotas for the theoretical release of overseas film to 34 films per year, up from 20. Of course, that has to provide that the additional 14 films will be in 3D or IMAX format. The Chinese government also raised the, market, the box office shares that the foreign studio can enjoy to 25%. Such kind of changes are also kind of support by the fast-growing content and technology ecosystem in China. China already has the largest internet population in the world with over 560 million online users at the end of 2012. And it is a remarkable achievement given China only had 45 million users at the end of 2012. Two. In fact, there are now an estimated 508 million social media users and 516 million online video viewers. Such remarkable growth in digital consumption is being driven by the convergence of network devices and content. So what does all this regional development Regulatory liberalizations and digital convergence mean to China M&E markets? The answer is quite simple. Growth. What you see here is really a growth picture. Between 2010 and 2015, Ernst Young projected that M&E growth in China will outpace the GDP growth in China by a factor of two. What's particularly exciting is that all different subsectors of M&E are growing, including some of the so-called sunset sectors in the developed markets, such as publishing. Now, with all this tremendous growth, one would expect, what about the challenges? In this slide, I'm going to highlight a few key challenges or unique challenges. The first one is market diversity. China is not one market but a complex multiple of combination of multiple markets. And there are significant cultural, regional, economic differences and many e consumptions. And this offers opportunities for ME companies to customize or localize their products and services, but also require careful analysis, planning, and execution. And then the second one is immature digital ecosystem. China digital ecosystem is still evolving. And in fact, revenue models are still developing. Advertising models still dominate, especially the digital um, media. But m and &E companies are seeking to diversify. And then the third one is, is quite typical for Chinese. It's the lack of direct payment culture. Ch 
Chinese customers are accustomed to paying very little or nothing for content. And this is great challenges for ME companies seeking to diversify the revenue model. And then the fourth one, of course, is very important, is privacy. From counterfeit DVDs to illicit downloads of movies and TV shows, privacy still remains a significant problem in China, making it difficult for ME company to realize the true values of its goods and services. And then lastly, regulatory complexity. Despite the current changes or, or the liberalizations of the uh, M&E sectors, China M&E sectors is still heavily regulated, and there are various uncertainties. This requires M&E company to devote significant time, resources, and also energy to navigate this complex environment. So how does M&E companies navigate or address all these challenges? Of course, market and regulatory challenges can be overcome by the right strategies. And Ernst Young has identified four key success factors. These are, number one, building strong brands. Building a strong brand is essential to success. Leading m and companies are localizing their brands to address the needs and expectations of different market segments, adapting pricing and distribution strategies, and also using social media to reach out to the customers. Succeeding in digital. With digital changing the way Chinese are uh, enjoying the content, companies could not succeed in China without a successful digital strategy. And then third one, forming and operating effective partnership. Ernst Young believe that the Sino-Foreign partnership can be an essential ingredient for success in China. Not only they allow these uh, the companies to overcome some of the China unique regulatory challenges, but each partner can gain from the resources, skills, and expertise of the others. And successful partnerships are usually based on early establishment of the strategic objective and the corporate governance structures. And then lastly, navigating the regulatory environment. While we have been seeing some regulatory liberalization, China regulatory environment remains complex. This requires greater management, monitoring, and assessment of the, the impact of regulations on the strategy. All these factors are explored in great details in Ernst & Young's latest sport leadership report, Sport Out in China. In closing, I want to thank you all of you for letting me the time to share my excitement about the China m and sector. To be sure, the challenges for m and companies seeking to expand the market presence in China is significant. Yet, the market potential is too much to ignore. Thank you.